Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway here for your recruiting update on a Thursday. And uh, unfortunately, there is notable recruiting news this week. Uh, I wish we weren't sharing this, but we are. Uh, this will probably get some people you know, a little jittery and nervous and not have the most fun. But Lincoln Cure, K-State's crown jewel of this 2025 recruiting class, is taking a visit this weekend to Oregon for their game against Maryland. Uh, we've talked about how this has been floated out there a couple of times and that, that obviously the interest in looking at Oregon is not totally gone. We know that Oregon was not ever going to stop. What is your read and, and vibe on this situation, Drew? Uh, the the vibe is more like just me kind of questioning so, so some of the, the situation. Because if you were going to visit Oregon, I know that a lot of like what your own schedule has to do with a lot of things, but going to the Maryland game just seems a little off when we kind of heard about this visit before Oregon played Ohio State. And it's like, oh, you would think that, that would be the time, uh, but it's not. But you just kind of look at it and it is concerning in the fact that you would like him to not visit Oregon. But at the same time, it's kind of like what we said last week is like K-State still has a lot of advantages at play here at play here. Number one, he's already committed to K-State. So that that is a, a plus for K-State going into this because he would have to break that bond and break that tie, which I think that he's been wrestling back and forth all week with if he even wanted to go visit Oregon because the bond with K-State is so strong. Uh, number two, he was just at the Sunflower Showdown for the last K-State home game. And then the third thing is just that he has such a bond, not just with the K-State commits, but also with players on the roster like Avery Johnson and Dylan Edwards. It's like, okay, there's a lot going in K-State's favor. This visit is... Not a good thing. Oh, and then the other thing that's in K-State's favor is just the tight end usage this year and being number one in the country in tight end touchdowns, that they always have that as more ammo. It's not great that he's going to visit Oregon, but if we were going to put this on like a 1 to 10, like what's my panic number? I said on Cayman yesterday that I'm probably about like a 6. Like, it's not like a two because he's still visiting Oregon, and it's not like a 10 because I don't think a flip is just like imminent. But it, it is concerning in the fact that you would like him to just not take that visit and would like him to shut it down. But I don't know. Sometimes you, I think you need to see what it's like there and compare it to what you already know because this is also his first game in Eugene. And he hasn't seen a game there. So I think that he wants to see that and kind of compare it to the atmosphere at K-State. Uh, I will say, though, it would be extremely, extremely beneficial for K-State to work to get him to visit for the Arizona State game immediately after being at Oregon this weekend. Yeah, I, it's such a weird thing because, yeah, the number one thing that you would want if you're K-State is he doesn't take the visit. And that would be the thing that I know a lot of people out there are going, well, you're, you're committed somewhere. So why are you doing this? And it's just, it's how it happens now uh, with, with how guys operate, but you want to be certain again of this. And I think there have been different times during this recruitment where um, like K-State's taken their big swings and, and gotten the, the kind of respect that they've needed out of it. It worked out for them. Um, now you got to hope that all that holds holds up enough against whatever this Oregon visit does uh, because this is just the guy that's trying to make sure that he made the absolute right choice with K-State. Um, we, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago and, and what the situation's like, but it's whenever you get into something new or you think you've made a decision, you need to have something that happens that confirms that that, that, that decision was correct. I will use a a personal antidote to accurately explain that when I made the decision going on two and a half years ago to leave radio and take the job, uh, at, you know, what used to be K state online over at rivals and became email online. 
I was pretty certain that I wanted to do that when the opportunity came up because I thought, okay, there are a lot of circumstances here that provide a better situation for me and my family. I think I'm ready to be done, but I'm not 100% certain. Like there is still that little weird thing to me that's just like, it's going to be weird. I, I don't know. Is this the right move? Um, for, for a number of reasons. But when I went in to inform those that needed to be informed of my decision that I was going to be um, taking this job, um, there were things that were said that did not jive with who I was as a person and who I wanted to be affiliated with. And I walked out of there and all of a sudden, all the stress and second guessing about the decision I made had gone out the window where because I went in there and I had that conversation and everything that came out of it, it was, I 100% am making the right decision. I don't need to worry about going back on it or backing out or doing something different. And I was able to confirm it right then and there that I had made the right call. And I think everybody else in life makes these decisions where you go, man, is this the right thing? Is this, but you're going to have that moment before you actually commit to doing whatever it is you've done that gives you that. Now, Lincoln Cure, by his own admission, kind of already had that moment back in the official visit time in the summer when he you know, had the story about going to the stadium and all that. But that was a long time ago. And as we've talked about, when you're uh, a kid that is basically ranging from Lincoln's age to being you know, 17, 18 years old to it probably tops out right around where where we sit, Drew. If you're about 17 to 25, 26 years old, Oregon football holds a really special place in, in your life because of the wild time that those uniforms and Chip Kelly and everything about Oregon was. Like, I would say a majority of people my age when we were, you know, middle school or late elementary school outside of whatever school your parents went to, your favorite team was probably Oregon. Like I was rooting for Oregon hard in that national championship game against Auburn. And so you have that, you have the other interests there. And so you still have that pulling. And I can only imagine what it'd be like somebody that has the talent to be in this position like Lincoln Cure. Um, he wants to go and make sure that he's made the right call with K-State. I don't think this is him going out there because he still thinks that he wants to go to Oregon. I think he wants to go out there and get the answer on is K-State what I want to do or do I need to even more seriously consider making a change in this? Either way, you're right. You do want to be able to bring him back if you're K-State and reaffirm that he made the right decision choosing you the first time around. So it's confusing. It's complicated. Um, but I, I'm I'm with you ultimately. I don't think this is something to have you know, every day wake up and, and worry about this. It's something to monitor. It is, it's not fun until you know it's completely shut down. But I would not call this something that is, you know, a, a lock to happen that he he flips to Oregon. No, and, and that's the other part that K State's at a, a difficult spot right now because I ideally you would want an answer from Lincoln probably close to after this weekend or next weekend because you have to know what to do because you didn't take a tight end of the 2025 cycle or 2024 cycle because you, you knew that there was two really big ones locally and on Brave and Lincoln Cure. So now it's like, okay, you've had, you've had Cure in the, the bag for a little bit. Now it's, can you get across the finish line? Or if you can't, you would like to know as soon as possible so you can kind of do your own research and finding other targets to potentially go after. But I, I still think that ultimately that Lincoln Cure ends up signing with K-State. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Good to keep people tame a little, you know, uh, keep them away from, from driving off the cliff right here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something to monitor and I'm sure we'll get continued nuggets of information over the next couple of weeks. And uh, obviously the big tell would be if, K-State can get him back to Manhattan for the Arizona State game like you talked about. All right, uh, real quick, before we dive into the other half of today's show, I want to remind everybody about K-State getting ready to head uh, over the Atlantic Ocean. There, There's a little geography 
knowledge for you. What's your favorite I'll, ocean, Drew? Uh, I'll go. Ooh, I'll go Pacific. No, okay. no real reason. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, I, I think the the beach situation for the Pacific versus the Atlantic is just a, a little bit. It, it fits my vibe a little bit more in terms of like the the weather situation, like. I think it's kind of fun to go to to a, like a California beach and it's a little dreary or, you know, not as warm. And uh, I know some people hate how cold the water is in the Pacific Ocean. I don't know. I, I can handle cold water. That's no big deal. So uh, but you won't have that opportunity if you're going to Ireland. You're probably only going to get to see the Atlantic <laughs> Ocean unless your pilot has made a massive air in which direction he's going. But I know I know that if you. Use Air Lingus to get over there. That's not going to happen. And what better way to kick off the 2025 college football season than cheering on the K-State Wildcats in the Air Lingus College Football Classic in Dublin, Ireland? The Cats will score off with the Iowa State Cyclones on August 23rd, 2025. And whether it's a quick trip to Dublin for the game, a multi-city adventure throughout the Irish countryside, or exploring the Emerald Isle on your own, there's a package for you. Visit Cats2Ireland.com for information on official travel and hospitality packages. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. All right. Last thing I wanted to get to with you today, uh, we occasionally go through here. You are our professor in recruiting and how it works and different terms and different things. Uh, today, I want to ask you another thing to maybe keep people a little bit more calm and not as skittish. K-State suffered a really terrible loss on Saturday to Houston. Ugly. Houston, not good. K-State did not play well. Uh, I think there is a tendency for people to overreact on when bad losses happen or losses happen in general to how recruits react. In your experience over the years, how much of an impact do losses actually have on recruits? If you're going after, like, and I don't want to say this in a, a bad way because it, it probably will sound pretty poor coming out of my mouth here, but if you're going after, like, level-headed kids, not much. Like, I, I know that there was a four or a five-star, like, I think it was the next class uh, that was at an Auburn game when they just got trounced earlier this year. And I sent it in our group chat that said, like, he said something like, I didn't see what I needed to see or whatever. But that that's like more of the exception than the rule. Well, and to because, be fair there too, like, it's not like K-State is like Auburn right now where they've no. been missing bowl games and like the losses are more consistent just than the one-off type of thing. But yes, that also is one of those where it's like, you kind of knew what they were going into it. What what were you expecting to see that you didn't get there? But yes, I, I get what you're saying. And I think uh, for the most part, you don't have to worry about saying anything wrong because uh, I don't think K-State recruits many, if any, guys that don't fit that level-headed uh, crossbar that you're trying to get over. Well, here's my other thing, too, with that is like if kids were swayed one way or the other after like one bad loss or like one loss, like teams like KU and the the less miles era never would have gotten players like ever. And, well, and actually, uh, talk about talk about a guy that did recruit some dudes that fell under the level headed line. Uh, so maybe he would have still gotten some of those because I don't know that they would have many other options. But yes, uh, again, I agree. Yeah, like it, bad teams just wouldn't get players. So one bad game and one bad loss doesn't really do anything for you. And then on the flip side, because I don't want to just stick with the loss theme, one really good win and one really big win doesn't really impact it one way or the other either. Because it recruitment is a like whole process of like, okay, relationship with coaches, check. Relationship with the position coach, check. Head coach, check. Coordinator, check. What is the vibe like when you go there? Do you feel like it's home? Check. Like, it, it's never like a, oh, well, K State was ranked really high and lost to Houston. Got, got to drop them off the list. No, that, that, that's just not how it works. Just like how if K State was to, I'll just throw this out there because they're number one right now. And it's kind of ironic that I bring this up. If K State was to beat Oregon, <laughs> I don't think that th that would f impact one way or the other either. So it's, 
it, it's kind of a two prong thing where it's all relationship based. It is more impactful there than what's on the field, because if it was all dictated about what's on the field, some teams just like straight up would not get recruits. Yeah. And they would never get better. better. Yes. And never get better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and it would also to go to this point you're making about like wins don't automatically do something for you. Uh, K-State basketball still hasn't landed a five star since going to the Elite Eight. Bruce Weber talked about when they went to the Elite Eight. Yeah, it got us in more living rooms, but we never got those guys. And look, nobody liked hearing him at the end be like, well, you know, we were we were in on this guy. It didn't get him at the end, but we had a chance. Could have brought him in. Uh, didn't happen. Um, but like, that's just. That's how it goes. It there's yeah, well, and you talk about the process also. This process, it's not just like a hey, you build a relationship real quick. Now, some recruitments that is how it happens, but this is like a a two plus year process that plays out in some cases. So you have to have the combination of the relationship side of it, which is goes probably longer than anything else, and then also you have to have to some level, the on-field success or be able to sell success on the field because nobody wants to go be a loser for three years. Like, that's not no. fun for anybody. Um, but, yes, the, I, I just other wanted part you is to... Selling, I was going to say the other part is selling like what that player is doing on the field to kind of goes hand-in-hand with success. Yeah, kind of like what you're talking about with K-State and the, the tight end usage currently and how that, that works out for them. So... Uh, that is, I just wanted to, to throw that out there for anybody thinking that the, the bad loss to Houston had any more impact than just what took place in the big 12 standings in, in K state for this year. Nothing. I, I don't know that uh, a single guy in the, the class is going to decommit because of that. Uh, so no. no worries there. And they didn't lose out on getting anybody two years from now from the Houston area because they lost that game. I, I don't think no. that's going to happen, but We'll just we'll remember this, and uh, we'll check in on the 2027 guys, any of them from the state of Texas in a couple of years. Uh, let's make sure to ask them about what the impact of K-State losing to Houston in 2024 was for. I mean, I, I think that that's a good idea. It was just because here's the other thing, too, is that what other things, what other people just don't really understand is a lot of high schoolers, aren't like super dialed in on a college football Saturday on like who wins and loses every week. So that that's another thing that you have to really take into account that a bad loss or a really big win don't really impact it like as much unless you're playing for like a big 12 championship where they probably will be tuning in for that. But like if they were just like hopping around and on their like YouTube TV multi-view a lot of high schoolers aren't like super dialed in. Well, how many how many commits right now do you think you could ask them and they could tell you exactly what K State's record is and they could tell you the two losses? Like probably less than half. Maybe a little maybe slightly over half just because they're so busy with their own stuff and and what we've talked about on some Saturdays is that some Saturdays uh high schools are doing like their own film studies after their football game on Friday night. So they probably just saw the score real quick, but that's probably about all they saw of the game. Well, and uh, just in my experience, you have a lot of the the guys out there. These guys are so good at playing the sport that they don't do a whole lot of watching it in, in some regards. Um, I, I mean, I, I would guess a lot of the guys that end up playing a couple years of college basketball did not watch a lot of college basketball growing up. Like it's just the, the maybe they, they follow along with the NBA, but I'm not even sure they're watching that. It's probably just social media and 2k that's helping them along. Um, Cause I think it would blow. Some people have an idea, but some people would be blown away by the amount of guys that they don't actually know the sport that they're playing. They're, they're really talented at it, but there are a number of guys that they don't know the sport that they're playing, whether that is, you know, the, the mental side of the game, but also just what's going on around them. It's one of those things that, uh, it happens. Not, not, not everybody can be, uh, you know, not good enough to play division one sports like you and me and just watch it all the time and have that be how we are involved with it. 
uh, some of these guys, I guess they're losers that decide they want to play it uh, and, and get college paid for and get paid on the side too. I also think that it's a good thing because I, even on a bye week, I don't know if I would want my players like so dialed in that they know who is winning and losing around the big 12 every week. Yeah. I guess I, I could see how that could maybe cause some issues. So yeah, there, there you go. That is uh, this week's recruiting update with Drew. Uh, anything else you want to toss in uh, before we get out of here today in the recruiting world? Uh, nothing like super like interesting right now. Just that if you read some of the recruiting stories that are more like overarching, like commit watch, and there'll be a big board posted. Uh, you'll see that there is a new official visitor for next weekend. So go check that out. That great plug. Great plug. Go to on three, find kstateonline.com and you can find it all right there. We'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, D and I will do a Friday show, but it won't be previewing a uh, K state football game because they're on the buy, but we'll have some football talk. We'll get our best bets in there and uh, we'll talk a little bit of basketball. D first thoughts on basketball this season and also the cats getting ready for Cleveland state. So, that will do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching and listening to the KSO Show.